Hello, I'm James. So what I'm going to do today is something which I tend to teach everyone the first time they pick up a guitar. So you may already know it, but I'm going to teach you anyway. Just go over it because it's really good. Even if you're already really good at guitar, or you're just starting guitar, it's the sort of thing where everyone can do it. And it's just a really good thing to do to improve your how comfortable your hands get on the frets. So it's called a spider. Um, what you do, you take your first four fingers, and you assign them each the first four frets of the bottom E string. And all you do, you just play those. Trying to get a really clean sound out of all of them. So what you don't want to do is, is do something like that. So this is all about trying to get the cleanest sound, prop, cleanest sound possible out of all of these notes. And once you do that, so you go one, two, three, four, next fret. One, two, three, four on the A string, up to the D string. One, two, three, four. G string. B string. E string. So that all together will sound like this. And of course, you start really slow when you're starting, so you're as slow as you like. So if it's the first time picking up picking up a guitar, by all means, just go. No pressure to go fast, no pressure to go slow. What you want to do is you want to find a comfortable speed where you can do it. And especially if it's your first time, just get used to what it feels like to have a finger in each of those frets. So the next step is once you get all the way to the top string, like that, you then take this finger push fret and you shift the whole shape up the fretboard by one like that so now instead of one two three four we're now two three four five and the other thing is that we go down we descend in the notes this time so the top so the, the whole top part of the spider will sound like this end of the first bit shift up to five and now we're going down all the way down all the strings just like that so now we've covered from one to five on all the strings one ascending one descending and now if you want to carry on once you get there shift up again like that and you just go up again Once you're there, same thing again, shift it all up a fret, like that, and then you go down, then you go up again, like that, All the way, and you can carry on going to your all the way up here if you want. So that's just really good for getting your fingers used to all of these, um, all of the different frets. So the next part of spiders, which um, is important and will become more important as you get faster and faster with it, is your right hand technique, or if you're left-handed, your left, your picking hand technique. So we've covered this. That's what to do with this hand. So, what I find is useful is do no matter how slow you're going, get your hand used to doing alternate picking. Which means instead of so when you pick pluck the string, you're going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up like that. So you're not going like this. You're not going this. You're doing both. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that helps you get a nice, clean, even sounding tone. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Because you can only go so fast doing everything down picks. And up picks just feel weird. So it's all about alternate picking. 
Um, the way I alternate a pick, which kind of was a bit of a barrier for me when I was learning, because I used to hold the pick like that, just kind of like that, not particularly. I'm trying to get it so you can see my pick in hand. Like that. So kind of a weird sort of glory little grip, which works, but for alternate picking, it feels a bit just not very, not very easy because you're kind of hitting the string flat with the pick. So you're hitting it like if that's that's the string, you're hitting it dead on flat like that. But it's way easier if what I do now, and I I used to only do that when I was alternate picking, but now I do it all the time. And you see most people do it like this is you kind of hold the pick more like what well, I, I always say put it there on that knuckle that one there and roll your thumb over it and get these fingers out of the way so you can take these fingers away or you can poke them out there and that means that now you're hitting the string at how did i do this earlier at, instead of a flat angle it's a more of a rounded angle so it's easier to not get caught on the strings Something like that. Yep, yeah. and that's also good for any sort of music, really. Which you're doing stuff like you got that that grip, which helps you do the alternate picking. So the way to improve with these spiders, because it's one thing just playing them like that. And it's the other thing, using it as a as a tool to improve your playing. And the way I, I always end up teaching this is you find, you get a metronome, pretty much. Which, some people hate metronomes, some people love metronomes. Uh, I hate them, but then I loved them when I started actually using them. So what you can do, I've just got one on my phone, which I'll grab out now. Just literally just download an app, search metronome, and it just looks like a metronome. Mine looks like that. Super easy. That's in three four for some reason. Like that. And what that does, it just helps you keep a time for your spider. So the way I teach you is you have two numbers. You have the number that you're good at, and the number that is you're just not able to do. It's just a little bit too far out of your own comfort zone for you to be able to do comfortably. So for me personally. This is where I embarrass myself. My comfortable number is 90 beats per second, and that's four notes per beat. That's not very fast, because I'm not a very fast guitar player. So this is comfortable for me. And then you get the touch room, you get the metronome going, and you just try and keep it on the beat like that. So that one is comfortable. That's the one you do first. That's one when you're warming up, you go straight to your comfortable one. You don't want to push yourself too fast uh, when you first pick up your guitar to practice or to warm up. Or when you very first start playing, you just pick a nice low number. Or even if you're very, if it's the first time touching a guitar, don't bother about a metronome. This is for what you to do if you're, once you get the spider down. So 90, in my case, is my comfortable number. Let's say 105. We'll see is just is a little bit uncomfortable for me so a bit too fast so you can hear there not all those notes were nice and clean a lot of them were bum notes you got ones where it sound a bit buzzy like that a bit kind of so that's the number that I want to aim for. I want to be able to get good at 105. That speed, I want, and then I want that number to become my comfortable number. So then you forget about 90, 105 becomes your comfortable number, and then you pick a slightly faster number, say 120 or 110, or whatever. You can do big jumps, little jumps, or whatever you want, and then that becomes your uncomfortable number. So see how you go 90, 90, 100, 110. So you've got two numbers all at once, one being the uncomfortable, which then becomes your comfortable as you get better. So say if you're 
ju you just kind of got to the point where you can get all these notes nice and clean. Say, pick a number of, say, 30. One. So once you could do all of the, all of these nice and clean at 30, you then go, oh yeah, cool. I'm pretty comfortable. So let's say my uncomfortable number is 45. Like that. And if you if you find yourself dudding out some of those notes, like, like that, or you find it a bit tricky, just go down a bit, or that makes a good uncomfortable number. If it's well out of your league, then that's more than an uncomfortable number. That's like an impossible number. Say for me, I can't go. If I tried 120, that'd be way out for me. I can't go that fast. Just it's not even close because I don't practice enough. But you should. So that's kind of the basis of spiders and how I like to use spiders to help me improve. So now. You've got the idea of a spider, hopefully. They're really good things to warm up on. First thing you do when you pick up a guitar, especially if you, if you haven't played in a while, or if you've had a play a show, or you just want to sit down and try and actually improve and get some fast, fast, get some faster kind of finger speed going. They're great. So the next thing I'm going to show you quickly is this is the first scale that most guitar teachers will teach and the reason being is because it's one of the easiest ones it's one of the most well used ones um it feels quite comfortable under your fingers especially as your first one and it's just really versatile and this is um as if if i've taught you before you'll probably already know it this is called the minor pentatonic it'll sound like this Super simple scale. It's called a pentatonic because it's got five notes. One, two, three, four, five. There were the notes, then we just double them in the octave. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There's your octave. Like that. So let's do it up at the 12th fret. Why not? Nice and high for an E, because that's our 12th note there, minor pentatonic. So just like with the spider, we're going to assign each of these four fingers to the four frets. So if we were doing a spider up here, we would go nice. Like that. So we've got our first finger for the first fret, second finger for the second fret, third finger for the third fret, fourth finger up there, yeah? So in actual fact, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, fret-wise. So we're going to remember that all the notes played on the 12th fret, first finger, all the notes played on the second fret, second finger, all the, first, all the notes played, sorry, on the 13th fret, second finger, 13th fret, fourth finger, that one, ring finger, 15th fret, little finger. But in actual fact, we only need the 12th, the 15th and the 14th. So, first note, E, easy. Now, we're going to lay our little finger down where it would naturally fall in the spider. So, because our little finger is in charge of everything on the 15th fret, it's up on the 15th fret, like that. Now, we'll go back to the upper string, back down to the 12th fret. And now we're going to use our ring finger, which is in charge of everything on the 14th fret, to go to the 14th fret. So 12, 15, 12, 14. Same again on the next string. 12, 14, 12, 14. So all those, they're all using these two fingers. Like that. Now these top two strings, E and B, are the same as the bottom E. So we're going to go 12, 15 with our little finger, 12, 15. And that is E minor pentatonic up at the 12th. And 
it's really good to use those fingers because a lot of the times um, when newer guitar players start playing guitar, they jump in and they go like, oh, I'm, I'm sick. I, look at what I can do. And they do mad stuff like, which is all good. It sounds good. But they don't use their little finger, which can be a problem because it means later on when you're doing slightly stranger scales, like, I don't know, it's just kind of a, I mean, you got all the fingers, you might as well use them, especially in chords, I find using your little finger is really useful so when you get to more extended chords like that, or like that, pretty chords. So um, the cool thing about minor pentatonic, about all pentatonics, about all scales on guitar, actually, about most things on guitar, is that you can move it wherever you want on the fret. So once you learn that shape that we just did up there, that one there, as I don't use my pinky like I just said to, you can now move that anywhere on the guitar fret. So that's E, because that note's E. If we want to do an A, just need to find the A on the guitar fret, which is fifth fret on the E string, which is something uh, which will come as you, the more you play, you'll just be able to remember what it is pretty much. There are charts, you can always just look up what they are. So um, yeah, A minor pentatonic, find the A there, exactly the same thing. So we got each of these fingers assigned to, a, assigned to the fret, just like in the spider. So we're gonna go ring, uh, pointing finger, little finger, pointing finger, ring finger, point, ring, point, ring, point, little, point, little. So we have one up there. Now we've got one down here. As I'm using the wrong finger again. And literally anywhere on the E string, you can start one of those scales. So you can do almost like a spider in the minor pentatonic. So you can do this. Sounds weird. So all I'm doing there, playing the, playing the pentatonic, shifting up a fret, playing it again, shifting up a fret, shifting up a little bit, all the way to all the way up there, go on. And the cool thing about pentatonic is that it's really, I, I'm, I always say, when you learn a scale, I always try and get people to improvise as, as soon as they can, pretty much. As soon as you've got a scale under your belt, use it because it's a really good way of learning it. Because one thing being able to shred, you know, pentatonics everywhere, but they're useless if you can't use them. Because if you if you step up for a solo and you just go, it's good. It sounds cool. It works musically. It works, but um, you want to be able to go up to a solo and go. which is just pentatonic stuff. So the simplest way of doing this, literally crack onto YouTube, search, say, pick a, pick whatever scale you like the most. We've been doing pentatonic, so pick E minor pentatonic, that first one we learn up here. That one, up in 12. Um, search guitar backing tracks, E minor, it'll come up. And then literally just play, start off by really simply just playing that scale over. So if it goes like, dum, 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 just super simply, especially when you get it wrong like that, just over it. And then have a think and go, what notes sounded cool? What little bits of that did I like? So you can start doing stuff like this. stuff like this all of that stuff is improvisation it's getting you used to the different scales minor pentatonic super cool for it because it's easy to remember it sounds iconic because it is the the blues scale almost just with a few notes missing 
it's most most rock and roll it's all blues so that's why the minor scale minor pentatonic is a great one to learn so i hope you learned something in that quick little uh smashing out of one new hopefully a new scale if not a revision on an old scale that you already know and uh, a spider which is a great warm-up so yeah enjoy